So, yeah, this is a slightly changed title and also a slightly change of. Uh, well, here. Authorship. So, this is my colleague from the Norwegian Computing Center. Um, then, uh, this is the data that we have uh, LIDAR data of uh, this island, Aran, in Scotland. So I think the dimensions are like 30 kilometers by 15, something like that. And these uh, colored dots are the known sites of, of three different types of archaeology. Um, so it's roundhouses, uh, shielding, and small caves. So this is what we try to detect. So this is the numbers for the training data and the validation when we are doing the neural network. Classification. Um, so basically, we are working on a 0.25 meter uh, resolution, and the uh, high torch is the, the, the network that we have used as the basis. Um, these are some training augmentations that we have done. Rotation in, in the angle we dropped at this stage, um, might pick it up later. Um, yeah, the pre-trained network had <coughs> a bigger size, it's 224 by 224 pixels, it's at this scale obviously too large, so it includes too much background, so that's why we have reduced the sizes. Um, yeah, so this network is actually composed of 49 feature detectors as the sort of input, this each feature detector is 32 by 32, so by just using a 3 by 3 or 2 by 2 uh, arrangement of these detectors, we get these smaller image sizes. Uh, so this is some visualizations that we might want to choose from. So this is a gradient, this is two different image shapes. This is um, a normalization that is often used for visual data, so it's like giving a uniform illumination across the scene, but with laser data that doesn't really make sense. So this just means that the variation is the same everywhere, so small things are exaggerated unless there are big things <coughs> close by. So this is just a normal, uh, similar to local relief models. Uh, so just subtracting the mean of a window, in our case uh, 30 by 30 pixels, here some color combinations of the above. Um, so um, this is then hill shading from two different angles, north and east, and then with the local relief in addition, so this might be nice to look at if you like colors, and this is what we have into the network. So the network is actually using three colors, but we have just sent them the same uh, for the, all the three bands, so it looks like this. Uh, you will see some detail here, so this is the known uh, objects that we are looking at. This is two different types. This is round houses in blue, and then there are the small parents in in uh, orange. So this is the big circles are just easier to see when I zoom out, that's why I have it here. So this is the detection results and all this pink are obviously wrong because there are none of these shillings in this part of the data. There are lots of good identifications of the round houses and then there is the, an occasional location or identification of the small cairn but this is well. Um, it seems that uh, the biggest objects are easier to detect. Uh, so this again is the uh, ground truth. Um, this is uh, some examples of roundhouses that we didn't detect. So um, what it could be two reasons. One is that there are some nearby other big structures or that the contrast is low. And this is another example. So it looks more prominent here, but then there's also a lot of background noise. Um, this is what did work. Um, well, maybe not this, but this is... Uh, here is a detected roundhouse, so this is 
the structure here, and I think it is here. Dave, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Dave was out in last week in a terrible rain to take these photos. <laughs> um, here's another one. Yeah, I think it is like this. Um, and another one. Um, the shape is a bit different here, so than the others, it is more rectangular, but yeah, I'm not sure if this is rectangular or circular. It isn't there. Um, here's another. Um, so when I say indicated, it's like it's not a very strong detection. Um, here's another one. This was. Um, these two trees are on the edge. Um, and then there is another one here, and I guess we are looking from this direction, is that right? Yeah. So this is the structure, and here is another one. Uh, so you can see the vegetation is making it difficult to take very clear photos. Um, and here is quite high vegetation, and I was asking Dave, is it the vegetation that we are seeing, or is it actually the structure on the ground? And, yeah. Dave says it's the structure on the ground. Um, when I look at the vegetation component of the data, I don't see the vegetation so far. Maybe it's a mix. Um, so all the results now, they are, the roundhouse detection seems to be fairly okay. Improvements are always needed. Uh, for the other two monument types that we have looked at, it's not very convincing at all at the moment, but um, we want to improve on that. And the training is quite slow, but it's easy to make it even slower by just throwing in a lot of more background examples. And I don't have the patience to wait four days for a new result, so I want to have it quicker. So that, you know, I, can, I can wait 15 minutes, that's more than long enough for me. <laughs> Change some parameters and then wait. So it's, yeah, the iteration is what, what takes time. So I want to have more iterations to. No, I mean, using neural networks sounds easy, but then there are so many parameters to, to change to see if it becomes better. So that's sort of the, the process of doing this. Um, there is also, yeah, we have some processing loops that are just generating stuff. So before we do the neural network, we have to generate some input data, and then we have the classifications. We want to run it on the entire data set. So, and this, this is fairly straightforward. It's just nice to have in place so that we can now focus on the method improvement. Um, this is some of the things that I've tried, and I'm not saying that I'm excluding any of these things, that just it, the combinations that I've tried didn't work too well at the moment, so, yeah. Um, so, I think the main problem seems to be that the detection method is picking up on other detail in the data that we have not labeled as the classes that we are interested in. Um, so maybe we should throw in some extra classes to take care of all our confusions and then retrain the network so that the confusions are then taken out of the sort of the interesting classes that we want to find. Um, there are also some other issues like some of these structures are really weak in the data. I mean, if it's not possible to see them, then obviously we can't find them, but it's slightly possible to see them, and then it's not a strong detection. Um, in some places there is either an overlap or a very close agency with some strong terrain features, and in some occasions there are some shapes that deviate from the, well, most of the structures of the same kind, so this could be a challenge. Um, <coughs> we have discussed, uh, myself and my colleagues, how we can sort of improve things. So this is, I already mentioned, uh, maybe the 
uh, the data that we feed in could be better so to, to highlight the structures that we want even better. Um, the thing is with any <coughs> processing method it enhances some things and then it sort of destroys something else so it's always a give and take. Um, I think with the subtracting the mean value of the terrain in a window it, when there's something suddenly happening this like uh, is flat and then suddenly a, a steep uh, well, river bank or something then that steep edge is sort of smoothed out and then destroys features that are close by. Um, uh, with, two years ago I presented a work on, on charcoal burning platforms in Lesha in Norway and I think one reason of the success was that the terrain didn't have as much detail as we see here. Um, um, just want to promote my latest paper on a completely different field is on vegetation <coughs> classification in the forest. But it's, it's, I mean, it's just a data source that is interesting. This is uh, 186 channels in the uh, visible and near infrared. So it's a great data set. It's not for free, you have to fly and pay for that, but it's like if you get across some data like this, it's, it's worth trying to work on it. So it could be used also for like crop marks when they're not visible, and maybe there are some traces of some vegetation stress already. Um, maybe if, if there's an open area with exposed soil or, or minerals, it could be maybe linked to hidden archaeology logical structures, I don't know, it's just, well, this is a neural network uh, with just pixels, but with 186 bands, so that means, and we didn't do any pre-training here, so yeah, it's a method that's well, possible to use for other applications than this particular. Um, we have open positions at my institute. It's not specifically archaeology, but it's image analysis, remote sensing, and machine learning. Um, if you're interested, and uh, thank you for your attention.